Hi, I'm Brian Preer, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is gas laws. Now, before you scream and turn me off, let me assure you, this is not half as bad as what it looks like. It's actually a lot simpler than this. Having gotten that out of the way, let me tell you what you'll need these for. Pressure, volume, temperature, and moles in a gas. That's what you'll be using these for. So let's move on to their actual application. These first three laws, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's, in terms of calculation, you probably won't have to memorize them at all, because they're combined in the combined gas law. Whenever you need one of these, you can pretty much just look over here and you've got it. However, your teacher might ask you a question like, what is Boyle's law? And you just have to know it's P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. But using just this, I can show you all three in action. So let's go on with that. Let's say your problem gave you a gas, and your gas was being kept in a container at a pressure of 5 atmospheres. Your container had a volume of 100 liters. The volume of a container is always the same as the volume of a gas. And the temperature it was being kept at was 50 kelvins. It was then transferred to a new container, where the pressure was changed to 2.5 atmospheres. Your new volume was 110 liters. And you want to know what your new temperature is. Well, you've got a lot of gas laws here. Which one do you use? Check your variables. You've got pressure, volume, and temperature. Which one is all three? Combined gas law. So pull it down. Your initial pressure is 5 atmospheres, P1. Your initial volume, 100 liters, V1. And your initial temperature is 50 kelvins, T1. And you set that equivalent to the other side, which is all the sub 2s. Your, your new pressure is 2.5 atmospheres, P2. Your new volume is 110 liters, V2, and you want to figure out what your new temperature is, T2. So, multiplication and division. 5 times 100 is 500, divided by 50 is just 10. That was easy enough. Keep your units. I know that atmospheres times liters over kelvins is a little crazy, but it'll all simplify in the end. And over here, 2.5 times 110, that's 275 atmospheres times liters over T2. So now we just need to do a bit of simplification. Bringing T2 over there, you'll know, find out that T2 is just 275 over 10, which is very simple math. You end up with T2 being 27.5 kelvins. And that's all it took, plugging in and simplifying. So what if you wanted to use a different one. Let's say one of these variables was instead held constant. Let's say that instead of working with all three, pressure, volume, and temperature, your pressure was held constant. You had a container at, with a volume of 100 liters at 50 kelvins, and you were moved to a new container with 110 liters. In this case, you bring back the combined gas law, just to make it easy on yourself if you didn't want to memorize these. You could, of course, just say V and T. That's Charles. But let me show you a neat trick. You write out the combined gas law. That's all you'll ever need. You don't have pressure, so just erase it. And you end up with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Charles' law. You're done. So all you have to do is plug in. 100 over 50 is just 2. And you've got 110 over here. Multiplication will get you 220. You're done. So these three, well really four, but since these three are really just that, one law is really easy to use. The next one is even easier. Dalton's law of partial pressure. The textbook will probably say something like the total pressure of gases in a system is the sum of the com partial pressures of these gases. Easy stuff, actually. All that means is add up the pressures. Like, if you wanted to know what the pressure, P total, in your system is, and you had 5 atmospheres of oxygen, 10 atmospheres of nitrogen, and 15 atmospheres of polonium gas. Unusual. And you want to know what the total pressure is. Add it up. 5 plus 10, 15. 15 plus 15, 30. The total pressure of your system is 30 atmospheres. 
The law of partial pressures just says add them all up. The last thing is Avogadro's law. And this is N1 over V1 equals N2 over V2. V is still volume. That won't be changing. But N, whenever you see an N in chemistry, think moles, because that's usually what it is. It's moles over here. Your moles of gas over volume is moles of gas over volume, if there's a change. Now, before we go on, there's just one factoid that teachers like you to know. And that's that one mole of gas at SDP is, will hold, occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. I'm not sure why you would need to know that particularly, but it will appear in a bunch of questions. Like, if you had a question, if you have a mole of gas at SDP and you put in two more moles, what volume would it occupy? If I didn't know this, I'd be terribly lost. What's your first volume? Well, 22.4 liters, one mole of gas at STP. And you've got moles in volume. That's Avogadro's law, so let's work it out. You know that you start out with a mole, N1, and a volume of 22.4 liters, V1. You know that you've added two more moles for a total of three moles, N2, and you've got an unknown V2. Well, plug in you eventually get that V2 is just 3 times 22.4. Multiply, and you get that V2 is 67.2 liters. Kick. So to recap, you might want to know the names of each of these laws, but other than that, if you need to use them, just memorize this one and erase the variable that doesn't come up. Dalton's law of partial pressure, add the, all the pressures of gases together to get the total pressure. Avogadro's Law? Easy enough. Just plug in and play. If you want to find out which one to use, just check your variables. If you have pressure, volume, and temperature, it's that one. Any of those three, you could just erase one of the variables to get one of these and apply. Moles in volume? Avogadro. Okay, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.